So if you're a beginner on the banjo, you may be wondering whether or not you can stick with your inexpensive one and be fine, or whether you need to get a more expensive one. That's a really common question among beginners, and I'll be addressing that in this video, and also later on I'll give a direct comparison between my really inexpensive banjo and my banjo that's a little bit more expensive, so be sure to stick around for that. And if you enjoy my content or you're learning the banjo or about to get started, I make all kinds of videos about this, so please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the like button. That helps me out a ton, and I would really appreciate it, so thank you. Okay, so the first thing that I'll talk about is whether or not the difference between an inexpensive and an expensive banjo is really noticeable. For me, for years, I couldn't really notice it. Nowadays, I hear a drastic difference, but whenever I was starting out, I really couldn't, and you may not be able to either. Whenever you're getting started, it's really important to just learn, to not worry that much about how your banjo actually sounds, because right now, it's more important to make sure you're learning everything, to make sure you're doing everything right. You've got your chords, your rolls, your fretting techniques. So whenever you're a beginner, and it was the same way for me, the tone of your banjo might not be something that you really pay much attention to or notice, and even if you try to do a comparison, you may not be able to notice it. So that was something for me for a long time. I couldn't hear a difference until I'd been playing for years. And then whenever I tried a more expensive one, the difference was huge. They just, they project a lot better, they have more volume, they have more of a pop that comes out of them. But like I said, that's not as big of a deal whenever you're a beginner and you're first learning, especially since the banjos that are that kind of quality are a lot more expensive than the other ones. And what makes a banjo sound better or worse has to do with the parts it's made out of. That's a really good thing that you can do is to familiarize yourself with the different parts and how they work because often really inexpensive entry-level banjos, a lot of times they won't have a tone ring. My first banjo doesn't even have a wood rim. It's just a piece of metal replacing it. So if you really familiarize yourself with the different woods like maple, mahogany, different tone rings, different rims, how they're put together, and you can really find out what you like and know exactly what you're looking for, that's a really good thing to do. And then another thing that's really good to take into consideration is what if you get a banjo and then you decide you don't even like playing it? That happens to a lot of people. They'll get a banjo, they play it for a little bit, and then they just they kind of slack off. They decide it's not really for them. They put it away and they don't really ever think about it again. Now, I mean, it's really sad that that happens because the banjo is awesome, but some people, they, it, it just doesn't click with them. They don't enjoy it. So it would not be a good thing if you spent a lot of money on a banjo and then decided that you don't like playing the banjo. I mean, that would not be good. So that's just my opinion, and you may want to consider that. It may be something you haven't really thought of, that if you've never played the banjo, it might be a good idea to go for a cheaper one whenever you're starting just to make sure that you like it. And then after you get the experience later on and you know that you like it, you could make an upgrade. So with all that being said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with starting with an inexpensive banjo. It's what I did, it's what lots of people do, and it's actually a really smart thing to do in most cases, I believe, because like I said, you may not even enjoy the banjo. At first, it's more important to get an instrument that just has solid construction and that will work good to learn on, because you may not notice the tone difference as much at first. But you need to be specific about which one you get, because a lot of really cheap banjos, they're just not good quality. They're built really cheaply and they're really hard to play. They have issues that aren't really fixable. So just be careful which one you get. My first banjo, which I'll show it to you in a minute, was a Rogue B30. I believe the model was a B30. I'll correct myself on the screen if that's not right, but I believe that's what it was. So I had that banjo. That was only 150 bucks when I've got it. I believe it's gone up a little bit now, but it worked really well for me for a lot of years. Of course, it's entry level. It doesn't look too fancy. It doesn't sound as great as a better banjo, but it worked really well. And those are super inexpensive. If you go for something more like a Recording King Dirty 30s, that'll likely be similar quality but a little bit better because Recording King really does a great job on their instruments, so that's a really good recommendation. I know Jim Panky recommends those a lot. So if you're getting started out, Recording King Dirty 30s Resonator Banjo, that's a really good one to start with for bluegrass. But um, if you don't want to go quite that expensive, it's inexpensive for a banjo, but it's not super cheap. So if you don't want to go quite to that price even, you could just try the Rogue B30 like I did. And there's obviously differences in the way an inexpensive banjo and an expensive banjo looks. That's what I used to put all of my attention on. I had my Rogue, and it's really plain looking, comparatively speaking, to other banjos. And that was what I was worried about. I really wanted to upgrade banjos because my Rogue looked so plain. It didn't have any kind of fancy inlay. It didn't have planetary tuners. The flange on it didn't look the way classic banjos look. And that was why I wanted a better one because I really didn't realize the big difference in tone and volume and playability, and that's what I care about now. I mean, the way a banjo looks is not near as important as how playable it is. 
So that will be a really good thing for the Recording King Dirty 30s. That's a really solidly constructed banjo. It doesn't have planetary tuners, it doesn't have fancy inlays, but it's a really good banjo to get started with and that'll really help you start playing and figure out whether you really enjoy it or not. And then if you play for a while and you really, really enjoy the banjo, then you may want to upgrade. So I'll go ahead and show you some obvious difference in the way the banjos look. This is my Rogue B30. You can see on the head that I did wear it out quite a bit. I played it all the time, but that doesn't affect anything. That's just normal wear. So anyway, that's this one. But like I said, whenever you're starting out, the way a banjo looks is not a big deal. And this is not a bad looking banjo. It just it's not, doesn't have the fancier stuff that the other banjos have. And then this is my gold tone. So yeah. I'll go ahead and show you the difference between the way these two sound. I can hear quite a big difference between these two banjos in the sound and then also the playability. My gold tone definitely has much better playability than the Rogue, but that's to be expected because it's a lot more money. But depending on how experienced you are, you may not be able to hear a difference. And then also this is through a video and in person it's a lot more drastic of a difference. So through a video you might not be able to hear it as much. But yeah, just listen to that comparison and see how much of a difference you can hear. And it may not be that much or it may be significant, it just depends. So in conclusion, I'll just say that whether or not you get an inexpensive or expensive banjo is totally up to you, but I do think it's a good idea to start on one that's a little bit more inexpensive for the reasons that I mentioned before. But if you know that you're going to stick with the banjo and you really love it and you want to start out with a good one, there's nothing wrong with that either. So just do what your preference is. And that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in any of my other videos, be sure to click here to check those out, and I'll see you next time.